everyone, welcome to Make and Take. Today I'm joined by Izzy and Tiffany from the Rockpool Project and we'll be exploring how you can record your adventures in your fish sketchbook. Today we're going to be talking to you about how to find things on the seashore and how to do it safely. As far as actually finding them goes, you're going to be want, wanting to look for rock pools with big sturdy rocks in them um, and you'll flip those over and most of these guys will be found hiding underneath. And I recommend just rummaging through seaweed, lifting up rocks, uh, though with a thing with rocks, once you've lifted them up and if you've found stuff, always make sure you put the rock back because these are the creatures' homes and they're there like that for a reason. We always start at low tide when most of the rocks are exposed uh, and the best rock pools are available. Further down the shore, towards the water, is your best bet, uh, as you'll usually find like the most species down there. Um, but even on the higher up shore here, there are still many species to be found. Um, proper footwear is really important for going out on the rocks. Can be quite sharp here, as well as um, you know, there's broken rocks from when the tide comes in, as well as barnacles. So a good sturdy pair of shoes with really good grip are really important. For that being aware of the tide times, you know, water com comes in surprisingly fast over these shallow rocks uh, and you have to make sure you don't get caught out. Yeah. So I recommend always going in a pair or as a group or a family, um, just so you're never alone, just in case any accidents do happen. So we're at Castle Beach today and we've already found a bunch of beautiful creatures. This is a European shore crab or green crab. Uh, they're one of the most common uh, species down here. Uh, and what's quite special this guy, because he's younger, he's got quite interesting intricate patterns on his back, which is another thing to look out for when you're drawing your species in your notebooks. So what we've got here is a strawberry anemone. They're one of the uh, larger species of anemone you get down here. Uh, and you can see why they're called strawberry anemones, because they have lots of little uh, kind of greenish yellow spots on their outsides. It makes them like a big fat strawberry. Um, this one's outside of the water. Um, when these guys get are submerged, uh, they have little tentacles that come out and kind of waft the air and uh, pick up little bits of plankton and food that's floating in the water. And then they pull it back down to the middle and eat it. So they feel quite slimy. They are safe to touch, but they don't, they don't like it too much. As you can see, he's kind of sucking in a bit. Um, they're quite slimy. Their tentacles are like almost like very tiny Velcro. They'll grip onto your fingers, um, but they can't hurt you. So this is an edible crab. Um, they're also sometimes called pasty crabs because of, they've got like a nice pie crust on the edge of their, uh, their shell or their carapace. They feel quite smooth and soft. Uh, some other key features of these guys are their lovely little black tipped claws and their hairy unshaven legs. Um, he's not showing them, but this guy also has really nice green eyes. Um, this one's quite interesting because he's missing one of his front claws and he's starting to grow it back, which is why we've got this little tiny bulb here. And in a few molts time, he'll have a, a fully formed claw again that's just like this one here. We have a Montague's crab, which is a very similar species to the Risso's crab. Um, and the real difference between them is their back legs. And as you can see, this guy's got nice smooth little back legs, whereas uh, Risso's are really quite hairy. Um, this guy is quite unusual in that he's got like a marbling pattern on his back. As he gets older, they'll become more of a, a kind of matte, pale grey colour. But still a really awesome little species of crab. Uh, this, so this is a defensive pose. He is alive. He's just playing dead. <laughs> so this is a sea scorpion. He's part of the scorpion fish family. Um, these guys get a bad rep uh, for being venomous. They're not. Uh, they have little spikes on their gills, so if you were to grab them, or if a predator were to grab them, they can spike you, but they are basically harmless. Um, they are a really gorgeous species, though. As these guys get bigger, these um, his front fins, so his pectoral fins on the side here, will get a kind of wonderful emerald sheen to them. Um, another cool thing about this species is they can actually change colour, a bit like chameleons, so he will change his colour to suit his surroundings. So if he's in like a, a kelp bed with all dark colours, he'll go a lovely kind of deepish green, because he's been in like a sandy rock pool at the moment, he's quite light and colourful. These are just a few of the animals we found. There are so many to discover. Visit our website nmmc.co.uk 
to find more and to discover the best places to rock pull. So once you've caught one, you want to get a nice tub like this. It can be a lunchbox, it can be an old takeaway bin, just something nice and clean. Fill it with a little bit of water. They, are, they do have gills, so they still need to breathe. And put your little friend in there, put them on a nice flat surface. And what I like to do as well is just get a little bit of seaweed uh, or maybe some rocks in the rock pool he was in and just give him a little bit of cover to hide under as well so he doesn't get too stressed while he's in there. It's always important to put them back because they live, these are their homes and you always want to return them back to their homes. Um, and it's always best to try and return them to the same rock pool that you found them in. Um, as well as when you've t upturned all your rocks to like return them back to the way they were. Um, because at the end of the day it's their house and I, you know, you wouldn't want your house being lifted up and then left off. So what we do is we get our little friend, picking him up nice and safely. We put our rock down back where it was and then put him next to it so he can crawl inside if he wants to. There you go. He'll find his way back home. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow when we'll be drawing quick moving animals like fish.